Hello everyone, I'm Sara Fabrizi and this is my second tutorial in collaboration with Clip Studio Paint. In this video I'll show you how to color hair, both in digital and traditional painting. Those of you who already know me might know that I'm quite fond of cell shading and that I largely use it in both kinds of media. Of course, the steps to use it in digital and traditional painting are different, but the core point is always the same. I'll color the hair of these two characters, which I drew in the previous tutorial. Let's start with digital painting on Clip Studio Paint. For those of you who are still new to this program, Clip Studio Paint is rich of very nice features to make illustrations, comics, web comics, paintings and animations. It is well-rounded and user-friendly. It can also be used on smartphones and tablets, and there are trial versions on all devices. If it's hard to suddenly get all the tools for traditional art, starting digitally might be a good idea. Having this software comes along with a very handy feature called Clip Studio Assets. It's a service that allows users to download screen tones, textures, brushes and 3D models to use with Clip Studio Paint. There's lots of nice stuff in it, take a look for yourselves. Let's get back to our tutorial now. First, I pick the basic color I'll shade with. Let's see. Maybe this brown one for the long-haired girl. And this pink one for the short-haired one. Let's create a new layer for the base colors and position it below the line art layer. Now select the area you want to color with the Auto Select tool. Expand the selection by 2 pixels and fill it in with the color you've chosen. If some tiny parts haven't been included in the selection, you can just paint them with the brush tool. It will probably take you almost no time to do it. Good, now we have to decide our illustration's highlight. This is extremely important, never forget to make this step. Keep well in mind the direction of the light when you color to create a very natural and coherent effect. I'll use a different one for each character to better show you how I do this. Let's create a new layer to make a gradient and set it to overlay. Now select the basic color area. Then pick the gradient tool from the toolbar. Keep in mind where the light's coming from. To make this effect, I usually use light shades of yellow. We can adjust our gradient's visibility with the layer's opacity. Now let's create a new layer for the shadows and set it to Multiply. Then drag its opacity down to about 80%. The Multiply mode multiplies the color we choose with the ones of the layer below, making them quite darker, allowing us to use only one color to make the shadows. Usually colder colors work better for this technique. I usually use shades of purple, but feel free to experiment as much as you want. Let's color the shadows. The first character's light comes from the upper left corner, so the shadows will be projected in a bottom right direction. 
Always focus on the main volumes of the hair, then tweak the details in a later moment. Try to figure out where the shadows are, as they will bring depth to your drawing. If you've just begun drawing, probably finding these shadows will be tricky, but don't worry, it's normal. I strongly suggest you practice and use a lot of references. You're going to improve if you have patience and exercise every day. Now we can add light reflections on her hair, so let's create another layer and place it below the line art. Choose the overlay mode. And bring the layer's opacity down to about 45%. Draw the white light reflections with a hard brush. Feel free to use the eraser tool to tweak the shapes as you want. Let's also scatter a few dots of light here and there. Okay, now things will get interesting by adding an indirect colored light. Let's create a new layer. Then select the shadows one. Hold the control key, then click on the layers icon. This way we created a selection of our shadows. Now, let's go back to our indirect colored light layer and add a few touches of dim light in the parts where shadows are darker with a soft brush. You can blend the color better by using a blender brush or by using a very soft eraser. I like this light blue, but you are free to pick any you like best. Experiment all you want. This trick makes colouring quite prettier, don't you think? Lastly, let's round our illustration off by colouring our line art. 
Select the line art layer and lock the transparent pixels with this button here. This way we color only over the colored pixels, meaning our line art. Let's pick some shades a bit darker than the ones we used on the hair. And let's pick our brush. Done! Our first colouring is completed. What do you think? Good! Now I'll show you how I use the cell shading technique in traditional painting by using gouache. Let's start! First, prepare the base colours. Let's make a lot of them, because we're going to use some in the next steps. Let's create the darker shades to color the shadows. Add a bit of dark purple, blue and a tiny bit of black to the base color and then mix them. For the lighter shade, just pick the base color again. Add white and a tiny bit of yellow. Lastly, let's create a color for the indirect light. Okay, we're ready to go. Spread the base color starting from the bottom. The closer we are to the highlight, the lighter the color has to be, so add the lighter tone to the base color. Try to replicate the gradient we've done with a digital drawing. Once the color is properly dried, let's start with the shadows. Follow the same logic as before. The shadows are projected following the light's vector. The great part of gouache is that if you make a mistake, you can just wait for the paint to dry and paint over it.
Let's get to the indirect light. Try to replicate the same visual effect we've done with the digital drawing here as well. Now for the hair highlights. Pick the basic color and add some white into it. Then paint the reflections with a thin brush. Good, now let's do the same on the second character. We're about to finish, only the line art's left. Let's use some colored markers to make it look cute. Pick a shade slightly darker than the color we used for the hair. Our painting is complete. Do you like the digital or the traditional version better? I think digital art is easy to get started with because you can redo it as many times as you like. Traditional techniques require more attention and precision, but I love the feeling of spreading the color on the paper. I enjoy both techniques a lot, and you? I hope you enjoyed and found this video useful.
Thank you very much Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring my tutorial. And thank you all for watching it. See you next time!